All right, guys. Uh, I I got a message from Mike Thomas during that and said, don't cut Mike Mahoney off. And I kind of said, okay, <laughs> I agree. So we've ran a little long here, um, I, but no problem. It was good information. I enjoyed listening to the things that uh, Mike was presenting there. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't remembered to, to donate a little bit to the club for the, the time that uh, – the demonstration that we had tonight, please do so. Um, you can find a link on the website, I believe, or if you go back to that email that Kevin sent out, there's a link there to, to be able to get to a, a donation spot there. Um, thank you, Mike Tom, or yeah, Mike Thomas, for setting that up, and and it was a a nice break to to get somebody in here that obviously has done a lot of turning in, in a lot of places. So without any further ado, we're going to get into uh, the last couple of things of the meeting where we get into the challenge and the challenge. Can I break in for a second? Yes. Hi, Larry. The link on the email to try to pay PayPal, and it uh, told me it didn't work on the server. So I don't know what the deal is. Oh, OK. Um, Kevin, is there a link on the website? for getting to PayPal? Yes, there is. The, the, the link on the server error might have been just a temporary thing. I, I can't imagine why it would not work. I, I got mine to work about an hour and a half ago. Yeah, I know yeah. my wife got it to work earlier this evening too, so. Yeah, try yeah. again, Larry. Try, try tomorrow or something. Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for asking, Larry, because if there was an issue, I appreciate that, that you were bringing it up, so thank you. Okay, so let's start this uh, challenge event for this month. And um, Dave, you're still out there, right? Dave Stalling, can you unmute yourself and remind everybody what our challenge is for this month? And um, then I'll ask the folks that um, do have a challenge piece to uh, use the, let's see, under participants, if you click on your participants uh, box at the bottom of the screen, then it'll open up the participants and there's a little button at the bottom that says raise hand. If I don't catch you that way, just shout out here once people get through there. But uh, if you wanna raise your hand, if you do have a challenge piece, and David, I, I hope I didn't cut you off, but please let everybody, remind everybody what our challenge was this month. Well, it's a simple, simple challenge to just use two axis turning and uh, turn something 90 degrees to the axis that you start with and uh, put a base on something and have it hollow and put some lines around it. I mean, it's not hard. <laughs> That's simple. Okay. All right. Hey, we got hands raising here and uh, I am going to go in the order that I'm seeing them in. So... Linda's iPad. I think that's <laughs> Linda. Where, where, where are we? There we go. Okay. So, Linda, unmute yourself. Actually, it's your husband. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I tried one, but wasn't happy with that. So, I tried another one. I don't know. It's all right. Still good, but you, you can kind of see it there. Well, you definitely got the uh, the uh, the axis part of it done, and it, yeah, it's a good start. Yeah, it's a good start. <laughs> Boy, I have something. Time for refinement now, right? Good job. Good job. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for uh, coming. If you just had deep gouges in your bowl, so since that was above my pay grade, I did this. <laughs> That's a start. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's it. Yep, we're done. Can you mute us? Oh, yeah. Chris, this is, this is Bill Paulo. I just wanted to say uh, regarding Mike Mahoney, I was fortunate enough to take a week long class from him, and he is one phenomenal instructor. Did you get that? You got it. Okay. 
He is very enjoyable, just just a great teacher, very nice person. Okay, here's a little tip from uh, outside here. It was Bill Paulo's suggestion that we pursue Mike Mahoney, and that's why I called him. It was on Bill's recommendation. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I am having a little bit of connection issues there, so I, I apologize for, for that. Um, it looks like, uh, Anthony, you're next with your hand raised there. You got show your project, your challenge? Yeah, I, I did uh, three or four of them. I had uh, a couple that didn't work, and this one it did. It's made out of pear. Uh, I didn't put a base on it, though. Does that, does that disqualify? <laughs> Not in my mind. <laughs> I saw these pieces, and they are they are uh, finely detailed. It's very nice, nice job he did. He had about three of them there in the shop the other day. Good job. Thank you, Thank you Anthony. All right, and and Melina. Okay, well, mine doesn't look anything like anybody else's. Um, so I just tried to do the multi-axis. So I was going to make a, a goblet with a multi-axis stem, but it didn't work. This part broke off. So I just glued it back on and I tried. <laughs> Placed in the race. <laughs> I think the trying is what it's all about. I think the more you try, the more you learn, then the easier it is to move on. So. so I tried a lot of different things. I mean, I tried it with the, you know, the points at the end where this one stayed stationary and then these moved around and I tried when it was stationary here and then it was moving. Anyway, it was an experience, but I didn't get, like I said, nowhere near <laughs> what I was supposed to. That's all right. You're, you're learning, right? I'm learning. Yeah. All right. Great job. Thanks. Great job. Okay. So that was all the hands I saw, but is there anybody else just needs to unmute and shout out if you've got something to show? I got one, Chris. I couldn't figure out how to do the hand thing, um, but I actually came fairly close, but my inside turning um, on the back side was good, but on the, the side sides, inside on the side is not gone through so and I had a little bit of a problem with uh, the jam chuck I used that it loosened up a little bit as I was doing the sides on the inside so um, I kind of gave up and then I said well I got to finish the outside and it actually with the back it actually turned out nicer than I, I thought but um, again I, I got to try this again to, to really get it get it good but it's fun it's interesting turning I'd say you did well. Good. Looks good. I think I can tell that you were there with David while he was going through his. So you, you knew a lot more about it. You know, it helps to be right behind the person when they're making all their mistakes and you go, oh, I'm not going to do that one. Yeah, you got to get something for offering up your shop and your video quality yeah. <laughs> performance. So good well, job. I watched his video several times. So yeah, yeah that helps me. All right. And Mike, it sounds like you got it, right? Yes. Okay. Here's what I was going to do. I thought, you know, like an emerging bowl, this is on two axes and I was going to put lines in it. Okay. Well, the problem is I put lines all the way down the inside, but on the outside, it's only going to be halfway. <laughs> and so I thought, well, that won't work. So I got this and I, I did a sphere. What I was going to do would be cut it off at an angle like this, and then I could do the put the lines on the outside, and I was going to put it on a uh, vacuum chuck. Well, when you cut lines on the inside, that won't work. <laughs> <laughs> cut lines on the inside, and so I thought, well, that isn't going to work. So, anyway, thank you, Professor Stalling, <laughs> for the easy challenge. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Always room for improvement. <laughs> I think that's why they call it a challenge, Mike. <laughs> I thought it'd be pretty cool to do it with a vacuum chuck, you know, and I could just put it at any angle I wanted and everything. But when you're cutting 
grooves in it, that won't work. <laughs> you, know, you have to do that on the inside first, and then you can do the outside the other way. So it's just a matter of sequence. I'll try that. We'll see. <laughs> I, I can assure you, I've done one out of the five on the vacuum chuck. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> it can't I'm going to have to call you later. It's a new <laughs> challenge, Mike. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Another challenge, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you thank you everybody that participated in the challenge kevin has a electronic way i believe that he selects the uh winner and it's announced in the wood chips and an email goes out i believe to the winner uh for the drawing for the challenge so great Thanks job uh, do we got another one <clears throat> no, i'm just saying that's correct we'll uh, announce the winner in the wood chips Okay. All right. So uh, great job on, on everybody that did it. I, I um, commend you because I was a, kind of a scared to, to attempt anything too big and didn't even get there this month. Um, so we've got our, our challenge taken care of. Let's go to the last little part of our monthly meeting being the show and tell. Again, if you want to click on the participants button and then do the raise hand. That seems to be a pretty good way to let me know who has items out there. And I only see, if, there we go, no, we're getting some, okay. All right, I'm gonna just start in the order that I'm seeing them on the screen here. So, Ann, you're first on my screen. What do you got this month? After I tried the multi-axis, Piece, I had to stop and have a drink. <laughs> so I made a wine. <laughs> That's it. I got to see those the other day at the board meeting. I thought those were pretty cool. They're good job. Good job, Ed. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Anthony, you're next on my list here. Well, I did. Uh, I saw this. I, maybe you can't see it. Let me. Uh, there. I saw this on the uh, AAW. Uh, symposium, what do you call it? Uh, it's a gallery. Thank you. And what it is, is it's just like two bowls where one of them is slipped a little bit. That's uh, cool. This was the first one I did. I didn't like the, uh, give me a second, there we go. I didn't like the fact that uh, this uh, was too wide. And the problem is you have to have... Uh, um, you, I use two tenons on the back, and you have to have the tenons, uh, the orientation has to be directly through the center. The axis of the turning has to be through its center. And so this is a little uh, to one side, and so it's thick. I did a little better on some uh, other ones. I did a couple more out of uh, pear. Um, you can't really see a whole lot, but they... Uh, they, I did a little better, but it's still got uh, room for improvement, I think. I saw these uh, in the shop the other day. Anthony brought them in, and, and I said if he could do about four of them coming up out of there, it's going to start to look like the Australia, the Opera House in, Austra in Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's got something to achieve there. <laughs> Great job, Anthony. Thanks Thank for sharing. Uh, Jeff. Julian, you are the next one I see with your hand up. Go ahead. Great. So I'm new to this, um, but one of the things I've been trying is leaving um, the shape of the piece on there and then carving the bowl through. So this is a chunk of Purple Heart um, that left the edges. And of course, these are invisible when you're doing it, so it's the death zone. Um, that's where you nick up your hands. And then here's another one where I pulled the angles down, but then I left them kind of there and still pulled that bowl out. Where did you get your brand? Oh, so I bought a laser uh, for my CNC machine. And uh, so I just set it underneath the laser and then dial in the coordinates, get the center point, and then it goes through and burns it on there. That's awesome. That's yeah. very nice. That's nice looking. I, I always like those kind of... Uh, pieces because you can find a way to use two inch thick product to you know two by type 
product and, yeah. and, and it's a way to kind of get the most out of it. It always seemed like when you were leaving the square portion of it. Exactly. So uh, I don't know why you keep uh, justifying things, Jeff, with the first thing you say is I'm new at this. Just <laughs> you're doing fine. Just keep going and just yeah, you still have, stick with it. You still have all your fingers? <laughs> yeah, yeah all, a couple gouges, but they're good. Beautiful all joke. Right. Effie, you got something to share? No, I uh, want to tell Jeff that uh, it's beautiful work that what he made. Very good, very good. Now, I don't see any more hands up, but if anybody just wants to unmute themselves and say you got something, that's fine with me too. Hey, I got, I can't get the button to work on my hand. So when you got a slot, I got a you let me share a screen? Dave, you're up. Go ahead. I don't let you share a screen, David. Okay. Uh, I gotta find you on the list though. Oh uh, your 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 co-host, you can share right now. Okay, just a second, I gotta get a folder open here. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll try to oh, keep go ahead. Sorry. I, I shouldn't say stuff like this. No, you're the, fine. Uh, you should see an apparatus at a tall tree. I'm not seeing it yet. I see a tool. Okay, there's an octopus in the yard. Hey, this is just showing a 75 or 70 foot tree walnut that's came down on my son's neighbor's property. And the reason I showed it is I got an article that you were kind enough to put in a newsletter so you can read all about what happens when you cut end grain on a tree. And so the next one I want to show you is the result of cutting the tree and you got to tell me if you see it that is the base of the tree at the ground level it was like 30 30 inches in diameter and about three or four inches thick and so I turned a platter that uh, came from the tree did it we're not seeing it did it show up I don't no, know if you're sharing it. it Dave try, try sharing the screen Oh, trying to do that. Share screen. Wood turning's a lot easier than this technical stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. There you got it. There's there. there. Uh, did that make it? Good job. We can see it now. Okay. Well, you notice it's not flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, uh, about an inch shorter on the cupped up side than it is on a long way length okay so we're gonna do away with that one and like a pringles potato chip yeah there you go mm -hmm. and i've got a little movie if i can find it here that i'll just show hopefully this will work as good as the demo did jack thank you for the tutoring back at that point so is that quarter song <laughs> no i think that's called square cut <laughs> in grain <laughs> End grain all the way. There's nothing on there but end grain. Wow. And uh, what tool did you use, Dave? I'm Dave? sorry. What tool did you use to, to I cut that? About three different tools before I was satisfied with it. I used a scraper a little bit and uh, used a carbide cutter, and I ended up using um, a bowl gouge sharpened really sharp. And okay. uh, that was, uh, you know, how I got it from where I started and so we'll get rid of that and there I had to go with a 23 inch circle because my lathe says uh, I have a bed down here and you can't impinge on that <laughs> so it just shows on the outbound side of my lathe um, everybody's been real good about wearing the masks um, we're doing better on keeping the shop cleaned up and I think we do have, we're gonna to try to coordinate a shop cleanup um, in September, but we're gonna to have to limit our numbers on that. So we may end up with a sign up genius that goes out just specifically for the shop cleanup. Hey, Chris. Uh, nobody's gonna tell, nobody's gonna tell Anthony when the shop cleanup is so that we can get Anthony to the shop cleanup, so. <laughs> By himself. Yes, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, uh, what's the <laughs> challenge for next month? Oh, darn. Mike Thomas. Uh, okay. You, you I, I, 
emailed Mike Mahoney and explained the whole situation to him and ask him to come up with a, a challenge for us for next month. And we just totally forgot it. But, he, you know, I explained, the, you know, our tradition and the situation and everything. And he was, he said, okay, I'll come up with something good. And, sorry. How about a platter? Yeah, what about a platter? I like that. Make it a, a, a cake platter, but make it backwards and then it'll be a patty cake. <laughs> it'll be for a bunk cake. <laughs> Just cake. To stand through the hole. Extra points for an oak platter. Yeah, extra, extra points for a quarter sawn oak platter, right? Oh boy. Oh boy, that's right. I'm going to go out looking for that nine foot diameter tree so I can get that quarter sawn 36 inch wide platter. <laughs> Well, I certainly appreciate everybody uh, sticking around, hanging out. Ran a little bit long tonight, but it was a it was a good meeting, and um, always appreciate everybody's participation in the show and tell and challenge. Again, I want to voice if you've got questions or anything. We're in kind of a weird circumstance with the pandemic and the limits and everything on on not being able to meet together. But if you've got questions. Uh, Go to the website, find a way to get hold of one of the board members. We'll do our best to get you answers. Um, look for some information or, or um, come in on the 22nd, sign up on Sign Up Genius, come in on the 22nd and get some pin kits. I'd love to see us get 100 to 200 pins. I think Sean's already hit the 50 mark or something. So uh, we just got to fill in the rest. But uh, thank you all. Have a great night, and if I don't see you before next month, I will see you at next month's meeting. I think we'll probably be planning on next month's meeting being a Zoom meeting. If something breaks incredibly, uh, we'll certainly change that, but I, I would anticipate we'll see you again on the screen next month. Thanks, guys. Great meeting. Right. Thanks, great everyone. Good to see you all. Have Good night. Good night. And again, thank Mike Thomas for getting him, getting Mahoney here for us. Thank Bill Paulo for suggesting him. <laughs> My pleasure.